All right, in this first video of sec uh, section 11.1, we're dealing with chi-squared goodness of fit. This is dealing with data that is categorical. Uh, we're going to be looking at an, a distribution of the data and comparing it to um, some other known distribution. So the example we're going to uh, start with is um, the M&Ms are made by Mars company. And so we think that we know what the percentages are of all the M&Ms based on colors. So we think that the um, Mars company makes 24% of their M&Ms to be blue, 20% orange, 16% are green, 14% uh, are yellow, and 13% are brown, and 13% are red. So Mr. Rogers took, takes a sample of 60 M&Ms out of a rather large bag of M&Ms, and he gets the following distribution based on color. So these are the observed counts. What would you um, expect the uh, numbers to be, assuming that they're, the Mars company um, tells us properly what the numbers are, what would we ex expect the um, actual numbers to be in our sample of 60? So simply, we're going to multiply those together. We're going to multiply the 60 times each of the percentages and come up with each of these values. And so the chi-squared test um, attempts to look at how different the observed versus the expected counts are. So if these numbers are very close together, then we would say, oh, okay, it sounds like the Mars company data that they're giving us is accurate. Uh, if they're very different, um, we would want to say, well, how likely would we get a, a, a difference as large as we found? So we really have to boil this down to a particular number. And so that's what I want you to do here is investigate, like, how could you take the numbers that we got in the previous slide and come up with some kind of statistic that, um, you know, boils all that down into one number. So try that, work on that, pause this, and then we'll proceed. All right, the actual um, chi-squared statistic calculation we use is we take the observed counts and we subtract from them the expected counts, and we take that value and we square it. And then we divide it by the expected count for each category. And then we add all of those up using, that's what the sigma notation stands for. And so the reason we square it um, is because if we didn't square it, then some values are gonna be above the expected, some are gonna be below the expected. And so um, these would, all average out and so we would come up with a chi-squared or, or, or a statistic that's going to be close to zero otherwise and so by squaring it we're guaranteed that any difference is going to show up whether it's positive difference or negative difference those differences will not cancel each other out all right so we look here um, and we want to calculate go ahead and do that pause the video and then calculate the um, for each category calculate the observed minus expected squared over the expected Okay, so we hopefully you got these values. Um, the final thing you need to do is actually use the summation part of the formula and simply add all six of those contributions up and we get a 10. Okay, so like we want to know how big is that 10? So we're going to investigate a little bit here on, um, on our calculators. So we're going to have our calculators generate numbers. Now we have percentages of the different colors of candies um, and so we're going to look at generating numbers between 1 and 100. We're going to do that 60 times, and we're going to store that in list 1. All right, and so how do we do that? We'll do a RAND int. I'll give you more details on the next slide how to do that in your calculator. We're going to take that, randomize, randomly pick 60 numbers from the range of 1 to 100. Then we're going to store that in list 1. And then we're going to take list one and sort it numerically so that the uh, small numbers come first. Before we do that, let's practice this. And so let's all make sure we get the exact same numbers out of our random number generator. And we do that by seeding our calculator by saying five and then hit the store button. And then ran, ran is found under the um, math probability. So do this, hit five, hit the store button, hit the math button, 
hit the go over to probability and choose the first thing. Um, that will seat all of our calculators at the exact same. All right, and then once you do that, you want to hit the math button, the pro, go over to probabilities and choose number five. That's the random integer. And then you do um, one comma 100. That will tell us that it's going to generate numbers between one and 100 inclusive. And then there's going to be 60 of them. Hit the store button and then it will and then hit list one and it will store it in list one. After you've done that, it shows you the first couple of values. Hit stat button and then go over to edit. Well, actually, it'll be on edit. And then you go down to number two, which is sort A, and then you do list one. So it will sort uh, in ascending order list one. All right. And so then what you do is you go through your list on your calculator, list one, and you count the number of uh, values in your list in the range of one to 24. That number should be 12. And then you scroll down and count how many numbers are between 25 and 44 inclusive. And again, that number should be 20. And to continue doing that, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but try doing all that. You will get should get these numbers because we all seeded our calculator at the exact same spot of five. It's not a bad idea when you're doing these simulations to add those numbers up to make sure that they add up to 60. And then calculate your chi-squared. I got 8.337. Okay. You're going to now seat, reseat your seed your calculator using your date of birth. That way everyone's calculator is at a different spot and you'll get different simulations. Now um, I went ahead and did this with my date of birth. And these are the numbers I got for mine. And you would do a similar thing. So pause this and go do yours and then come back and look at mine if you want. So these are my numbers um, from my first simulation, and I got um, a chi-squared statistic of 4.9, 4 uh, 4.78, I mean. And then I did a second one, and I uh, get double-checked again to make sure that I had 60, to make sure I didn't do any counting errors. And I got 6.3, and then I did a third one, and I got 9.26. So the idea was, um, you know, we got a value with our M&M &M example of 10.02. And we would just want to say, is that a big number or a small number? And you can see by looking at our chi-squared statistics just from randomly assigning numbers, right? So it's, it, this is all based on the fact that um, the null hypothesis or, or that the company, what the company is telling us is true, we are basing all of our um, counts on that because we are looking at the percentages here to come up with those. So just by chance, we got things pretty close to 10. I mean, we got nine and a quarter. That's pretty close. So it doesn't sound like 10 is going to be too huge of a number. Seems like we could have gotten that probably just by chance or something close to it just by chance. All right, so looking forward, um, this section, 11.1, is dealing with um, goodness of fit test for chi-squared. Um, it's dealing with one distribution based on one random variable, and so our variable is color of M&Ms. The other two um, tests, chi-squared tests that we talk about, and they will be in section 11.2, are chi-squared test for homogeneity and the chi-squared test for independence. These will use either two distributions or a distributions um, with two random variables, two different random variables. And so we'll use a two-way table uh, when looking at them. But that's later in section 11.2.